All right, we here again with another edition of the Brian Turner Basketball Podcast, and I got I got a special guest, man. I got I got my, my comrade with me. Uh, we gonna discuss a little bit about uh, man, what what is it like, man, in the world of athletics in high school sports? I know a lot of folks, you know, they uh, from from like the Monday morning quarterback would automatically think that uh, you know coaches, athletic directors. Um, just different supervisors of events like we don't have like problems of our own and when we when we jump into actually taking the position of working in athletics in the school man there's so many different hats that we were and so um, with me trying to you know pivot and, and have more you know educational folks on the podcast more coaches more student athletes on the podcast I thought it would be it'd be great for you know, uh, one of my close friends to jump on, kind of tell everybody that's listening, uh, kind of like the stuff that we go through, man. It's uh, it's it's it's, you know, it's one it's one of those type of positions that I mean, when we win, we get a whole lot of benefits from it, but a lot of times, man, on those losses, man, we we were a whole lot of stuff as far as even the the athletic director standpoint, administration standpoint, man. We we always looking to see what things we can do better. What things, how, how ways we can improve, and then at the end of the day, making sure like our athletic program is top notch, one of the best in the country, and we, you know, at the end of the day, want kids to come play for us, and we want to represent the athletic department of a school uh, uh, as far as top notch um, recognition. So I thought I, you know, reach out, like I said, to a good friend of mine, Brock Chapman, our AD at St. Mary's Southside Catholic High School. Um, just just jump right in, kind of, you know, introduce yourself to the people. Man, how, how tonight going for you? First time on the podcast. Cool. First, first I want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak on the podcast. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of them, do a great job, and, uh, you know, just waiting for my opportunity to hop on and, and say my piece. So um, just a, a little bit about me. My background is, is, is I've been playing sports my whole life, but... Um, Coach collegially, coach uh, soccer at uh, a couple of NIAs and uh, and junior college as well. So started at Missouri Baptist. I moved to, to Iowa, Iowa Wesleyan. Then down south, started a program at LSU Alexandria, um, and then moved back home where I took over a traditional powerhouse in the men's uh, soccer program at Jefferson College and started the women's uh, soccer program there. So. Um, you know, I've had a, a, a taste of um, uh, college sports, college athletics, and enjoyed it, and a little bit of success as well. Um, uh, moving to to high school athletics, uh, I knew it would be a challenge, but I, I, I was prepared for it. Um, and I, uh, I called uh, St. Mary Southside Catholic a sleeping giant in, in some of the athletics things. So um, obviously, there's a lot of things that I didn't didn't know I was getting myself into until I got there, but um, I knew that uh, um, there were a few sports that were uh, traditional powerhouses and that I could uh, do my best, do my best to support and help them get to the next level and get us on the national stage. Um, yeah, no. So, so from a let's let's just take it back for a second. So, your first impressions of just kind of understanding in totality as far as and, and you can go talk about how life was like as far as in high school but what was your perception of what an athletic director did when he was in high when you were in high school uh to be honest you know i, I thought a lot about it uh and you know i didn't i don't even remember who our athletic director was uh, but when i heard the name it was just i assumed that was the person that made sure that we had uniforms made sure we could travel um, and made sure the games were, were scheduled and, and that was it you know everything i thought everything else was was up to to the head coaches and everything just seemed to to flow pretty easily mm -hmm. and so so just like you said just right off the bat you just kind of had a notion of all right this guy is, a, is an important person but he's not really a coach he's kind of like the person that kind of sets up because from my perspective you know just me thinking back from, from an ad kind of like in the same view is like okay this person kind of sets the games up kind of like in the sense is like a promoter but i never understood the whole aspect of what an athletic director did from the sake of you know we played at a school we didn't have our own home 
field. We didn't have our own home court. We never really had outsiders coming in. So, you know, I didn't know in, in like, you know, totality of like, man, this athletic director person, he's important. But, you know, I was I was lucky enough to kind of be vetted because um, like my my high school AD um, was the old school basketball coach. And so at our school, it was kind of like when the basketball coach reaches a certain level, he's able to take on that that job of being like the AD. And so my whole life, I just was like, OK, you know, you get you reach a certain level as, at a certain point. One of the head coaches within the school, uh, you know, would, would take on reins as, a, as an athletic director. So you said you didn't know who the athletic director was at high school when you were growing up. So it, I, so it wasn't a coach. It just was his own standalone person, own standalone position. Yeah. So uh, I always thought that it was kind of a graduation position from when you know, the person was done coaching. Um, that was just the next step. Um, where I really learned um, about the athletic director position was when I was in uh, college down at LSU Alexandria, where uh, um, a guy named Adam Johnson took over and I actually got to see him with boots on the ground. Um, a lot of athletic directors do a lot of things like uh, you and me behind the scenes that people don't see or they don't even know, but um, it's one thing to do it that way and it's n another another thing to let everybody see the work that you're doing. So um, this particular athletic director actually um, was, was at our games, was at our practices and make sure that we had everything, making sure things were flowing and, and, every, and, and we had everything we needed. Um, it, from the, the minor things to, to the big things as well, you know. Um, so yeah, at that point, I realized like, wow, that this is this is a huge position, and it's um, somebody that really can put their fingerprint on not just one sport, but all of them. Um, not just the sport, not just the coaches, but the student athletes as well, um, and exactly what he wants to see out of the program and what he thinks is, is important um, in a lot of different ways that that, that will come out. Mm -hmm. And I think every every athletic director has its own kind of, you know, uh, style with, a, with approaching the position. Uh, you know, me coming from having a, a public school background, like I said, just being at a school that didn't have a gym, that didn't have a, uh, a, a field. I mean, we had a gym in the field, but we didn't play games on on the gym uh, i mean on our gym floor and it's uh on our football field so uh part of that athletic director's fold uh was also like like scheduling uh get finding opponents finding different things for not just one sport but for everybody so um talk about as far as um uh, you said you you, you kind of you, you touched on it a little bit as far as at the collegiate level. Uh, talk about the difference the differences in, in your approach from the collegiate level uh, holding that same athletic director title to the to the high school level, and are, are there any type of like cross pattern similarities that you can say uh, that it, it prepared me for this job coming into the the high school round? Um, the reason why it prepared me for this job is because uh, all of the athletics at St. Mary Southside Catholic are, are looked at as uh, competitive. So putting together the right schedule um, for multiple sports to make sure that they are competing, it's not lopsided either way, um, and it is uh, good for the growth and development of, of the student athletes and the coaches. Um, so we're giving the student athletes a challenge and we're giving the coaches a challenge. Um, so for me, the important thing is always the growth and development. So if anybody asks me what I'm about, like um, I'm, I'm about growing and developing. Um, I have the opportunity right now to have uh, over 100 student athletes that I'm responsible for. So it is a huge task to make sure that every schedule um, is full, but uh, full of uh, the right um, challenges to make sure that these these young men are, are growing and developing. Now, um, I feel like I'm blessed in this situation because I have a, a lot of great coaches that are that are around me. Um, so I don't really have to worry about coaching the coaches too much right now. I'm just there if they have a, a question to ask. But um, the challenge is in the schedule. Um, and I, I challenge all of the coaches to make sure that they're playing a challenging schedule um, and that can help us get to the next level. 
Yeah, because I know, you know, usually at the at the college level, I mean, and, and even just belonging to a conference, you know, right off the bat, you got these X amount of games that you can kind of feel fill in for conference games. But then it's like taking that look at, all right, what type of team are we going to have that uh, I think this will be a, a good match? Because, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we, we want our kids to have uh, success all across the board and kind of enjoy what it's like to compete in high school and if you playing a lot of games that are either like lopsided where there's not a lot of competition or you kind of getting blown out of the water you kind of got to reevaluate uh the program and kind of take a look and see what you know where are we and where can we possibly get better because when we get kids coming in here we want them to enjoy what high school is like and not you know be kind of like the, the 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 kicking dummy for other programs you know so so, so coming into it, having a uh, the inside eye, I'm taking over St. Mary's as uh, the next athletic director. Did you know right off the bat, like, oh man, this is going to be a lot of work? Is it going to be a lot to maintain, or did you kind of, kind of look at it as just like, man, I'm just going to kind of, you know, keep it moving the best way I can, and well, if, if we successful, I can identify what my success is like at the end of the year, or did you look at it like, like, what, what was your approach to coming into year one? My approach is, is always that um, like nothing that's great is easy. So I knew it was going to be uh, a lot of hard work. Um, I, I do uh, believe that um, there's levels to everything. Um, and all of the sports were at different levels when I got there. Um, and no matter where they are, it's a work, it's, it was about getting to the next level. So there's, there's a different level of, of, of work um for each sport that needed to be done um i felt um and i still feel as though there's a lot of opportunity at uh st mary southside catholic not only um, in the sports but in the hall uh, in the in the books and in the hallway um the biggest thing that i'll say is that uh, uh I, lo I lost my train of thought there uh no, no, we were just talking about just like going into it as far as like like year one, as far as like um, what what is my approach going to be? Because you said different programs are kind of starting at, at different yeah. things. So, uh, you know, right off the bat, you come in, we, we got a state championship caliber football team. Basketball is kind of hovering around trying to make a, a splash. Same with baseball and soccer. So, um, you know, some, sometimes when you're coming into a situation, you may be having a lot of ideas, but kind of taking a step back and kind of looking, you might be like, hey, I, I may not want to do too much because this is already rocking and roll. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. No, for me, it was always to just be the support that each of the coaches needed. Um, in, year, in, in my year one, football needed something different um, than, than, than basketball or, or say soccer. Um, so when I coached, uh, uh, and you know yourself that there's different different types of players, how you help those players on the court may be different. Um, so if I give this guy the ball, he may need me to get open to get the ball back. Some guys just need you to get out of the way. So um, I, I feel like I learned uh, the personality of the coaches and what they needed, and I tried my best to give them what they needed. Now, while doing that, I also tried to put my step on it. Um, so like all of the students and the coaches in the, in the building heard me say a lot about the culture that I'm trying to build. Um, and the culture that we want um, in the building and in the community is a, is a culture of excellence. So just making sure that the student athletes know that it's, it's extremely important to be a good person. Um, what, it's, what it means to be a good person, what it means to be a good student, and, and, and what it means to be a good athlete, and how I can help show them what that means. And for me, the biggest thing is just kind of just being there and making sure that I can hold them accountable in a way that uh, they knew was uh, supporting them to be their best self. Mm -hmm. Nah, that's dope. So, all right, before we jump right in, because, you know, I got I got a few little questions, but I mean, the, the biggest takeaway I want folks to kind of take away from this is that at the end of the day, yeah, we, we talk about sport and I, I think you kind of hit it, you kind of kind of talked about that but you know more than you know that just the experience and everything uh it's more about you know life choices making good life decisions at the end of the day and then we can be able to identify what our success looks like um i want to make sure that um you know for the people that are listening that again that it's just you know it's, it's not about sport but i want i want you to kind of talk about um 
thriving through through challenges because like i said me coming into a situation knowing that man this this team is uh or these teams are doing this doing that um kind of talk about like the challenges that you, you you felt like you faced in year one uh versus the things that you can kind of look for give advice to up and coming ad's that you know may want to you know or coaches that may want to go into athletics you can kind of try to tell these guys hey make sure you got xyz kind of lined up um moving forward so can yeah. talk about no, no the, uh, the the main thing is is organiz- the main two things is organization and communication uh, making sure that uh, you have all the information you need, making sure that it's organized and you can go and get that information if it's, if it's needed. Um, and then communicating everything that you need and everything that's happening. Those are the, those are the main two things for me in trying to make sure that um, I got the, the ball rolling um, in the right direction. Um, now, um, in, in, in St. Mary's, things are, uh, you know, we had a lot of challenges in year one. You know, it was, it was the most that the school was going to close and everybody was talking about it before I got there and it happened while we were there and football was was, was on the run. So that's also a, a challenge as well, trying to keep everyone focused uh, on the task um, of the year, but also trying to redirect them and, and, and let them know that, you know, that it, it still may be a future and what the future may look like. Um, so in that, the importance uh, of uh, the athletic department is, is is huge. Being that, you know, it's a, it's an enrollment driver. Um, not only uh, the wins and losses on the field, but how we present ourselves to the to the community as well. So that's that's a small piece of it. But um, a lot of I, I, I've learned that a lot of uh, student athletes show up to school and. They think that's it for them, you know. They forget about the the books. They forget about being a good person, and it's just about um, winning winning a football game or a basketball game or a soccer game. Um, and I'm there to remind them that uh, it's it's more than that. You spend you gonna you gonna spend more of your life not playing sports um, uh, than <laughs> than you are. So uh, that that's when we lean on being a good person. Um, and what being a good person looks like, um, teaching or growing these young men, you know, it's a wide range of teaching that we may have to do. Uh, uh, what being polite uh, looks like, um, showing up on time, look at, looking at someone in their eyes, like these are the things that we have the responsibility of teaching these young men. and. That's that's the challenge that uh that I love and I and I uh, grab a hold of and you know I, I, kudos to to you as well because I, I feel like I had the support as well. Um, I can't it'd be hard for me to, to to do all of this talking and I say that I didn't have um, support myself um, and that nothing's easy but that definitely made it easier having having the right people in the right places to help uh, support grow these young men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nah, because, man, I, I know how valuable support is, man. Just like I said, I, I've, I've experienced uh, running an athletic program where it was only, you know, again, two people, really, you know, me and a, and a student supervisor that, you know, kind of kind of helped me out along the way. But then, you know, you learn how to build relationships. You learn how to uh, 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 kind of, you know, like you said, the organization part, the more the more that you are kind of ahead of the curve and having things kind of laid out, you can kind of, you know, pivot. And that's what we're going to be talking about. You can kind of pivot when certain things uh, may may happen or uh, you, you can, you know, you won't be so overwhelmed when, when these things happen. So um, I think the, the most valuable part in having people like us, uh, again, is certain people that are part of athletics that are just an extension of the administration that may not even think athletics is, is important. But like you said, a lot of these schools and a lot of parents and kids think that athletics is a enrollment driver. And for those who have good quality coaches, good quality athletic directors, it's kind of like you, you need to take advantage of those things. Um, one of the big things I kind of want to kind of talk about and want to get some kind of insight on is for is making sure that, that the kids understand how to pivot throughout life. I know 
one thing that we talk about that we we never try to pigeonhole a kid and only just playing one sport we encourage kids to play multiple sports because you never know how that type of camaraderie whether if it's you know and and you may be an average player but i think that builds up school spirit i think that builds up pride and it also helps you pivot when like you said when the ball stopped bouncing at some point you're still able to figure out what else you want to do in your life so just talk about that that pivoting aspect to sports and then also um how is it as far as um encouraging kids to play multiple multiple sports yeah um i want to talk about pivoting in life first uh, just because in my upbringing you know i went to public school and private school so i was in i was um, immediately growing and developing around uh, two different demographics you know i went from one to the other and back again um i played basketball played baseball played soccer you know i ran track in high school so like those sports are giving me totally different experiences with a different group of people um and i could go from one room to another and and not miss a beat um now when you talk about playing playing sports uh i think um right now i have kids so i'm huge into youth sports i think it's extremely important to for uh, kids to play different sports at a young age because they're using different muscles um uh, now the reason why i love sports so much like is because of the lessons that you can learn playing so it may be easier to learn a certain lesson playing basketball than it is playing playing soccer um or playing a, a different lesson that you'll learn playing football than you will play uh, playing volleyball so i think it's important not only that um our uh, young student athletes learn how to how to compete what it means to compete what it means to be prepared to compete but also the lessons that that these sports are teaching as well uh, because there's a lot of lessons that um coaches may or may not be teaching in practices or games that um definitely transition to life um and if you're learning these lessons in a game you you more to prepare for them when uh, when life gives you um those lessons or those questions that you uh, are prepared to answer oh, man I was going to drop a bomb on, on one one. Hold on, let me see. Oh, there we go. There we go. That was, that was. <laughs> All right. So look, so check this out. So it's, it's funny that you said that because we, you kind of, t- uh, kind of discussing a little bit and you know some of the qualities that coaches may bring if that is in the, even their forefront as far as the philosophy of what they're trying to do uh, i want to play this let me let me know if you can if you can hear this uh i must try to share i'm gonna try to share my screen on this and tell me what you think about this real quick all right tell me what you think it is yeah that's right if, if the group didn't need management then we wouldn't make as much. I love reading draft evals and and somebody's talking about anything other than pedigree, talking about how poor somebody's hand usage is. Well, that's coaching. Mm. I don't run away from coaching. I run to coaching. It It all is in line with that not seeking comfort because when you're a coach that's talking about somebody can't learn, you're seeking comfort because your teaching is struggling. Yeah. All right, so give me give me some give me some feedback. Give me some thought on that. From so when you first see that, shout out to Mike Tomlin. You know, uh, a big time uh, uh, coach, man. No matter what sport you you know, football coach. Well, no matter what, but I mean, great motivator, great coach. Tell me what what you think when you hear something like that. Uh, uh, to be honest, I think a lot of a lot of people. Um, that are even in the profession of coaching underestimate um, the job in itself. Um, like a lot of us uh, coach because we love it. Um, there's some people that coach because they think it's cool and they, they chase the wins and losses. Uh, but for me, like there's there's a job to do. So like I said before, like that job is is growing and developing people as well, like as people. But if you want to be competitive <laughs> you have to grow and develop them as, as as athletes as well so you actually have to coach it's, it's not about just having um 
you can't always just get the best players. You have to get them from A to Z. So you, you, for me, I like to say you're going to come in the door like uh, one way, uh, but you're going to walk out of the door a much, a much better athlete. Um, and if, if it's the same with all of the athletes that are, are on my team or under my tutelage, I say, then I'm doing the world uh, a great service. And, and um, we'll have fun. The kids will uh, love me for it. And we may win some games while we do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nah, um, that's good stuff, man. Uh, like a lot of times when, when I'm talking to like, you know, up and coming coaches, younger guys that say that they want to get in the profession, it's kind of like what you said. You, you got to kind of look and see what lens are they looking at the game from. And it's like a lot of times they only want to coach if it's a successful situation. They only want to coach if they have high level players and they only want to coach if 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 the aesthetics and everything look right. You know, um, one one challenging thing that I'm doing right now as far as with my kids, even as far as the, the team and kids inside the classroom is um, uh, I, I want them to kind of articulate. And, you know, but we, we, we working on things right now as far as a mission statement. Uh, uh, things that no matter what you're going to say that look no matter what this is going to be my driving force to like you said get from point A to point B so what does that look like um, a lot of times people haven't even sat down even thought of a philosophy you know you say you want to get into coaching but you don't even have a coaching philosophy of again your why why are you doing this you know what I'm saying what is the intent behind you saying that I'm going to either pick up a whistle or I'm going to be because we got way too many people out here and that's the difference between good versus bad coaches we got so many coaches out here in my eyes and I'm going to just I'm going to kick down the door and say it I mean they are just bad coaches because they only want to focus on the winning when everything looks right to me me seeing what your your coaching pedigree is about and if you really can you know bite your teeth in this is that let me see what you got when you don't have nothing you know because that's gonna let me know exactly what type of person you are you know we we get on the kids all the time as far as like man these kids can't handle or deal with adversity or deal with adversity but look who they learning it from they learning it from a coach who you know can't get over the 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 fact of all right man i i, I don't have top level division one players or elite players am i finna just give up on these group of kids that say that they want to work or want to get better that's where the coaching come in at you know uh like i said no that that's, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off no uh but I, that's why i feel like I was blessed in my coaching career because uh, my first head coaching job, like I had nothing. I think people, I think coaches underestimate the phrase uh, "play the hand that you dealt." Like mm. you got, you got to, you got to, you got to work that hand out, whatever it may be. I had nothing at my my first my first head coaching job. Like it's hard to get players there. We didn't have a good team. And I had to figure out how to develop, not only develop those student athletes I had, but also go and try to win games for their enjoyment. Um, and I feel like that made me such a better coach than walking into a situation where I had all of these, all of these great athletes to, to where it was easy and I just had to worry about the X's and O's. I feel like that made me a better person. Every everybody doesn't have that opportunity. People walk into the game in different in, in different um, moments, and if they don't have uh, those moments where they struggle, they think it's it's all cake and ice cream. And um, you know, you get those guys that or those coaches that you know they 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 don't see coaching for what it really is, and it's growing and developing these young people. Right. And it, they're like the humility part. It's like, man, I done did every type of thing that you can think of as far as a coach from, you know, uh, you know, uh, wiping the floors. Like nothing is beneath me as a coach because it's, it's those situations that, again, you you dealt with in the past. They kind of mold you into the person that you are. So now when you do get a whip, you got a good team and good players that come in. Now you appreciate it. And now it's just kind of like shining that that diamond up a little bit. But you, if you never went through those things, then you could walk through our life and, and be be spoiled. And the moment that some type of adversity hit, you see these guys give up, you know. And it's like you know, like I say all the time, man. You got so many guys in this game that that is mixing it to fix it, you know, to where 
you know, one minute they want to coach, next minute they want to train, next minute they want to do this, next minute they want to do that. And it's just like, you know, yeah, all of that kind of it, 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 it encompasses everything, maybe as far as with the sport, but the people that really, really get down and dirty as far as coaching. Again, you know, you're not going to make a whole lot of money off of this. Half of the money that you get, you end up throwing it right back into the program. But it's those moments where you see kids and their success story and they come back and they say, man, coach, man, I'm glad you did this for us. Or we had this type of experience going to play in this place and, you know, di different memories like that. So that's the good side of coaching, you know, and, and we can again, we can pivot. We can pivot to, you know, some of the things that we don't like about the sport or even as far as athletics, because it's one thing to sit and complain about a whole lot of stuff. But coming from our perspective, being, you know, ADs, administrators, coaches, we have to come with some solutions. So I'm going to just go through a speed round. I'm going to ask you a few questions, man. You can chime in from, you know, from from the best of your knowledge. I'll try to chime in because at the end of the day, I want somebody to hear this and take what we saying and say, you know what? Let me write that down and let me try to put that into my repertoire going into next year. So, uh let's just talk about and these are the things that just put a black eye on on athletics in the general so the first question i have is uh um a lot of times you know as ad's we have the 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 privilege of being able to address uh ruly uh and unru unruly parents that don't know how to you know behave themselves at, at athletic events and you've seen i mean i've done episodes where i show where you know referees getting slammed getting attacked parents coming out the stands you know dealing with all those different type of things so from your perspective uh, uh tackling uh inappropriate fan behavior um what are your thoughts on it what are some of the things we can approve or what, what do you think as a whole that society need to kind of take a look at in addressing this issue right here um for me i just i, I believe that uh, everyone needs to know that uh in youth sports it's a standard um, and then when you talk about uh, high school sports or even private private high school sports there's a standard there as well um, the standard that uh, the institution that is hosting the game wants to uphold um, should be clear before the game starts um, mm -hmm. before uh, the parent shows up to the game so so for me, um, um, I do uh, my best in having uh, uh, parent, parent meetings just to make sure they know what our standard is. Um, and you know what? I know that uh, parents can get uh, animated, we'll say, um, excited about a game or w whatever it is, but they, they know the standard. They know that um, I have, it's my responsibility to uphold the standard to make sure that our uh, student athletes and our coaches are enjoying their experience and that, and that they can they can work in in the atmosphere so if at any moment that is uh not the case being that the parent is being unruly or whatnot um i like to give one warning um and if not like we have uh, security guards there um and parents have been removed from our games before and that's uh that's just um the, the the real the real of it and there's also been parents that have been asking to not come back to home games now um that's a learning uh, opportunity for parents just because this is your baby that you can't see um because you're not behaving the way um, um our institution wants um uh to be presented so yeah i mean and then at the end of the day it just come down to just respect man like you know everybody has a job to do um and then if again we trying to implement respect and having our kids have respect showing respect a lot of it is just kind of respecting the situation of you know this person has a job to do especially when it comes to fans that don't know the rules that don't understand what's going on in the game yeah you know we want you to be uh, the number one cheerleader for your for your kids but at the same time, it's a it's a respect factor, you know, that I think a lot of times they don't they don't they don't understand or they understand, but they really don't, you know, don't really care about it. They only going to be I mean, the game is, is going to be hurt when we have, you know, automatically when you have poor referees, you have to think about it as far as like, wow, why are we getting, you know, the bad the bad bunch? Well, it's be probably because, you know, something has probably been sent out saying, hey, you know, 
these parents or somebody is not, you know, abide by certain, you know, uh, uh, rules and restrictions, man, we're not going back down there. So now all of a sudden you have to take what you get. And it's and it's sad because I feel like, man, the uh, refereeing is, you know, again, it's, it's a, a human error attached to that. And again, folks don't, you know, everybody want to be perfect. Well, you, you probably not perfect at your job. So why are you getting on this person for, for doing it? So, you know, so that's, that's good stuff to know. Um, the, the second one I want to talk about is for is just managing parental expectations. Uh, I know from a, from the coaching side, uh, we kind of tag team a lot of it because, um, uh, you know, when we lay down as far as the rules for the team, the, the rules for the athletic program, you know, it's always going to be that parent that, you know, feel like um, uh, their, their kid is getting the short end of the stick for, for whatever reasons. So, again, we have to have those sit downs where we kind of manage or go over managing the expectations. And I think from a coaching standpoint, it's, it's like what you said, having clear restrictions, I mean, clear expectations from the jump about this is what we're going to talk about versus what we're not going to talk about. Can you agree to that? And if you can agree to that, then we can hey, we can work. If you can agree to that, then a lot of times I usually pass it on to you to kind of handle that that sticky stuff. So kind of talk about that a little bit as far as uh, managing uh, uh, parental expectations when you know some parents may feel like their kids is getting the, the short end of the stick. Yeah, uh, for me, it's just always being available available to communicate. Um, and by communicate, I mean to give and receive information. So I also I always allow that parent who has a problem to voice their concerns with me. Um, and I always uh, respond from a way that supports uh, my coaching staff. So. Um, every now, every every parent, just one example. Every parent wants to see their their baby play, um, but I am certain that the coaches and my coaching staff are uh, playing favorites. There's a reason for everything, and that's why we have standards in the athletic department. And I know that each one of my coaches have standards as well. So if your baby is not on the field, there's a standard that they're not meeting that is keeping them off the field. So this is a conversation that I'll have with that parent. And in most cases, it ends with encourage your son or daughter to uh, make sure that they are achieving everything they need to to get in the best situation to play. Um, and that may be working hard. That may be showing up on time. And, you know, it may be going to class. Uh, but um, the tough part, especially when you get into competitive uh, situations, is you could be doing everything right. And you know, this is so you could be doing everything right, but it's just somebody in front of you that's getting those minutes. So that's a competition aspect that also we have to remind parents that, look, you know, we have to we have to compete here as well. Um, nothing is given and uh, we don't I'm not giving anything um, and I know that you don't want uh, minutes to just be given to your son or daughter right so um, you have to compete and if you compete and you and you win then you get the opportunity but nothing nothing is given no that's uh, that's that's gold right there man so no nah, man hopefully that that folks who chime in to this uh if you if you're listening to this on apple music or apple Podcasts, spotify make sure you drop a comment to kind of tell us uh you know what you thought about the episode uh if you're listening to this on youtube make sure you please like and subscribe to the channel man this has been an enlightening conversation i think for any student athlete any uh, young professional that's thinking about getting into uh, athletic administration, coaching, man, you're you hearing it from one of the best, right? Uh, as far as, you know, tackling all these different problems. I mean, we, we all don't have the answers, but if we work collectively, set good expectation, man, uh, make, make clear rules right up at the front, it'll save us a whole lot of problems on the back end. So, I mean, it's great to get people like yourself come up here kind of talking about this because I think, like I said, a lot of times, man, folks don't know what what all encompasses man, the, the, the AD aspect, you know. And before we go, and I just kind of want you just to hit on this. You can hit on this just real short. But let's talk about now the athletic director's job is some of those hours people don't see, long late nights, man, like I said, putting parents out. 
doing all these different type of things. Um, talk about the work life balance that we all try to we all try to have, you know, and just give a little insight on the things that you're able to do as far as keeping a balance between both. Um, because, again, it's, it's a struggle. And I think if people hear from you, then I think they kind of understand that, hey, they're not the only one because it's something that I'm still trying to trying to work with. You know what I'm saying? Doing too much of work and not enough, you know, life, family, balance and both. So kind of touch on that real quick before we head out. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, and, and I'm not the best uh, uh, at it as well. I mean, uh, I, from from both sides at work and at home, but uh, the best thing I can say is just be present. You know, um, when I'm at work, I'm present. And, and when I'm uh, with my family, I try to be present as well. Now, um, you know, the game days can get long, you know, uh, and I try to make sure that on those days, uh, I, I set a I set aside some time to be present with my family and make sure that they they feel me because it's gonna be a long day, a long night. But I, to be honest, and honest, I'm not I'm not perfect at it as well, and I'm still trying to find the right balance. Um, but uh, being present is the best best thing that I can say. When I'm with my family, I try my best to be with my family, um, and when it's time to work, you know, I I, I definitely dive all the way into to work as well. I'm going to drop a couple bombs on that one. Man. That was that was dope right there. <laughs> All right, man. I, I appreciate your time, man. And uh, for the folks, like I said, listening to this, man, make sure that you're grateful for every sunrise and make sure that you're thankful for every sunset. Man, Brock, man, appreciate you jumping on, man. Appreciate you, BT, man. Thank you. Yeah.